Hello, my name is Ullas. I usually make uh, watch repair and clock repair videos on YouTube. Uh, but today I'm just going to try something different and I'm going to build a clock, a uh, Fibonacci clock. Uh, uh, and I'll be making a video on how I'm going to design it and how I'm going to build it. So before I start with anything, I'd just like to thank everyone for the wonderful response I've got uh, for my previous videos. Uh, so I've got 35,000 uh, views on my uh, HGS clock repair video as well as about 8,000 on my HMT uh, repair videos. And I've got uh, 300 subscribers as well. Let's cross 300 now. Uh, so uh, one person that I'd like to remember at this point is uh, uh, Mr. Prashant Pandey, sir, uh, who was the one who asked me to uh, make YouTube videos in the first place. That's when I made the first HMT video. Unfortunately, he's no longer with us. He passed away a couple of months ago. And uh, uh, that's a very sad thing. Uh, and. Uh, I'd just like to remember him uh, at this point and uh, I must apologize for not making any uh, uh, any videos, any new clock repair videos or watch repair videos. I've been getting a lot of doubts about the HMT videos. Uh, they're outdated and I have recorded a new version but I was unfortunately not able to edit it and uh, do the voiceover and upload it. Uh, that uh, One of the main reasons is because I was doing my post-graduation at NIT Calicut. Uh, I was doing my MTech. And for that reason, I've not been able to work on anything so far. I've just completed it. So uh, I've got some free time. And also, I uh, I am not a huge fan of doing voiceovers. And that's one of the reasons uh, I've recorded this video with live voice. And also, the other thing is that uh, uh, like I had bought a tripod to make better videos. But along with uh, most of my other luggage, it's at Koikot, Kerala, uh, where I was studying at NIT Calicut. Because of COVID, I had to travel back by flight. and. I had to leave my luggage behind uh, and uh, I will uh, make more videos. I will try to make different videos uh, like this one. I have uh, different interests, so I'd like to explore all of it and also have better equipment to make videos probably. Uh, so uh, in this video, I'll be uh, discussing about how I'm, I designed and built the Fibonacci clock. Uh, 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 my apologies if my pronunciation is not correct or if it's not accurate throughout the video because I have been doing the live voiceover. And a Fibonacci clock, uh, I'll be explaining what Fibonacci numbers are and what uh, Fibonacci series is and what a Fibonacci spiral is and how this clock works basically. Uh, so uh, these are available online. I've seen them uh, available online, but uh, when I checked now, it was not uh, up for sale. And usually they charge uh, uh, quite high amounts. Uh, so I never ha I wanted to buy one. I had seen this and I had seen a hyperbola clock and so on. Um, and I wanted to make all those. Uh, so this was the easiest one. So I decided to try this first. I had uh, some of the parts lying around. And uh, for that reason, I, de I decided to just uh, try this once. And I was able to build it uh, in a budget of around 100 rupees. I'll be putting the uh, proper amount uh, later in the video. Uh, and uh, that's about it. And uh, what I'm... Uh, uh, going to do is uh, uh, I'll be dividing this video into three parts. So in the first part, uh, in the first two videos, uh, we'll be seeing what uh, exactly a Fibonacci uh, series is and what a Fibonacci spiral is and uh, how uh, we'll be designing this. So I'll be using uh, the NX10 software to design this clock and I'll be taking printouts and building it with cardboard. So don't worry if you don't, uh, if you're not a fan of designing something or if you're not comfortable with any design softwares, then I'll be uploading a PDF with the third video. Uh, which you can download and directly uh, take printouts and build it. So uh, I think I can conservatively say you can build a clock uh, in around one to two hours if you have all the materials lying around. I took uh, more than that because this was my first attempt. I, to be honest, learned along the way because this is the first time I'm building uh, this thing. I have built uh, different uh, kinds of watches uh, or clocks rather, uh, which I'll be talking about uh, probably in uh, some future video. but. Uh, I like this is the first time I built this Fibonacci clock and uh, there was a lot of uh, challenges that I faced along the way. Uh, so I would request you to uh, watch the video till the end and make sure uh, you listen to the mistakes that I made and make sure you don't commit the same mistakes. So in fact, the spiral that will be the hour hand, I had to do it three times. I had to build it three times. So just don't make such mistakes and uh, uh, just make sure that you take, uh, you just watch the video completely. Uh, just uh, form your own opinion on what is the right approach and uh, probably build it. And uh, other than that, uh, yeah, uh, that's mostly it. Uh, so I have uh, more ideas in mind. The more types of blocks that I want to build, the more watches that I repair, 
I want to make videos on that. Uh, also on my other interests, I'm very much interested in aviation and so on. But uh, right now I'm looking for a job. So uh, when I get the time, I'll probably make uh, more videos. So I request you to enjoy the video. Uh, just uh, if you're interested in design, please watch the, watch the uh, first two videos as well. If you're not, uh, just you can watch the uh, the final video. Uh, I'll be probably putting the same introduction in all three videos. But uh, enjoy the video and I hope you build a Fibonacci clock. And if possible, please do post it. And also one more uh, thing is, uh, if you are interested in my work, I'll be putting in my, putting my social media handles. Please do follow me as well. Uh, so you can see uh, any other work that I won't be making a video on. So, uh, and uh, if you do build the Fibonacci clock, uh, please do uh, either on WhatsApp or Instagram, please do send me the pictures of uh, what you've built. Thank you. Now I have the file uh, that I've created, the PDF I have created open here uh, on my desktop because my printer is connected to my desktop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to file and choose uh, print. And I have to wait for that dialog to pop up and then uh, I should select the printer and then make sure that uh, the uh, the quality is set to photo paper best quality. I'm using a photo paper for this particular print. I think uh, the same uh, thing can be done using a normal paper but I'm going for a photo paper. Make sure that the size of the paper is set uh, correctly. I'll hit OK and uh, make sure that uh, the image is well within the boundaries of the paper and uh, make sure that the custom scale uh, is set to 100% or you can probably use the actual scale as well. Uh, I think these things will vary from printer to printer and I'm only going to take the current sheet, the dial uh, print out first and uh, I'll select print making sure yeah make sure that uh, grayscale is not selected and after that uh, uh, after making sure everything is proper we can hit print. Now let us see what are the things that we need to make this Fibonacci clock. So the first ever component that we need to make any clock is a clock moment, something which drives the clock works. So usually the quartz clock moment is available as a package like this. So this is a very general wall clock moment without any complications like alarm or anything like that. Uh, and this is uh, very easily available with uh, any watch spare shop or uh, watch mechanic. So I'll come to that. Uh, the thing to note here is that the, uh, I'm going to use the one with this uh, kind of a net on it. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll discuss about that in a bit more detail. And the next thing we need is a battery to power the clock moment. So uh, while making, uh, while buying it, make sure that uh, the clock moment runs. So the uh, wheel here has to run. So make sure that is running uh, before uh, you buy the clock moment. And uh, it's also a good thing to make sure that the seal is not tampered with. You can also probably reuse an old clock moment as well if you have any lying around. And you need the hands. So I have the uh, minute and the seconds hand. The hour hand anyway, we're going to modify it. Even the minutes hand will probably have to cut it uh, to the length we need. And uh, we just have a red uh, seconds hand. Again, uh, when it comes to the hands, since uh, the clock dimensions are standardized, uh, you should be able to get many different kinds of uh, uh, like designs with the clock hands. You can probably choose the one that you uh, like. Um, and after the clock uh, movement and the hands, the next important thing that we need uh, is the cardboard, uh, cardboard to make the clock body. So I'm using these uh, files, cardboard files. So I found uh, this uh, this cardboard to be of uh, uh, much. Uh, good quality much uh, thicker cardboard than the normal Fiji cardboard that is available uh, so I'm going to use this cardboard uh, you can also use any other stiffer cardboard that you have uh, and after that uh, you can use a regular uh, uh, A4 size sheet I'm using a photo sheet of uh, A4 size to take uh, the printouts on and other than that uh, we also need uh, uh, some paint uh, this is uh, to paint the clock body as well as the minute hand once we cut it so this is again optional and we need a brush to paint it obviously and uh, after the paint uh, we need the regular uh, stationery like we need some uh, knives we need some scissors and some pencil to mark everything we need a scale which is of uh, uh, at least this 30 centimeter scale what you can get or I think it's one feet uh, and other than that we also need the tweezers now we cannot uh, work on any watches and without tweezers and I'm going to use a regular watch tweezer 
uh, and then I'm going to use one of these harder tweezers so I don't know what this is exactly used for I had this lying around but I found this to be a good tool to tighten the uh, the nut of the clock so I'll uh, come to that in a minute so these are the things that we are going to use uh, to make this clock and if there's anything else I'll, I'll talk about it as we uh, proceed with the tutorial discuss about the clock movement itself I have uh, two moments here lying side by side and you can see that the dimensions are identical so uh, the difference between the two is that if you observe this has a net uh, a threaded net here and this doesn't have any such thing uh, but uh, uh, the thing is these kind of movements are used for uh, snap fit uh, kind of a clock in which uh, you have plastic uh, uh, protrusions uh, which will snap uh, this moment into place but since uh, we are making a custom clock it's always preferred to use this kind of a moment with a nut on it so this nut can be easily removed uh, now as i said these uh, moments are easily available everywhere and uh, usually i used to pay about uh, 35 40 rupees uh, in the market but since i'm not going to the market i bought it from a, a watch mechanic uh, and i paid 50 rupees for it now of course he's uh, keeping he has to keep some profit on it so I'm using this tweezer to just remove the nut and we can see that this nut is uh, quite flat and this will sit on the front of the dial and this will uh, hold the moment in its place. There is also this rubber ring just to provide that friction from the rear and we can see that it has, thread, uh, it has some threads here so that uh, this uh, will easily fit onto it, the nut will easily fit onto it. The moment will be on the back of the clock and this will protrude to the front where we are going to uh, put this nut and tighten it uh, with a tool like this. You can just tighten it uh, with your hand or regular tweezers but I just uh, felt this should be the easier thing. Uh, you can probably use this if you don't get the moment with the nut you can probably use the snap type moment but you probably have to glue it in place that is not something that I would recommend but uh, if you're not getting a moment like this probably you can use this and once you buy the moment uh, buy the hands that are uh, of the proper size because you can sometimes get smaller moments for smaller clocks but this is the standard size as far as I know and make sure all the hands actually fit the clock moment uh, that you're working on so in my case actually the second hand was a bit loose uh, and I had to just tighten it with some uh, pliers and make sure that the clock runs without any difficulty like this so once you're sure of that uh, we can continue with the rest of the thing the first step uh, before we can proceed any further with uh, between the actual clock is to take a rough print out of the pdf file so this pdf file has four sheets now you can print out all four sheets like i have done or you can only go for uh, the print out of the first two sheets and the idea here is to make sure that the print is coming out normally now there should be no uh, clipping on the either end so when i took the print out initially uh, the issue that I faced is that the top half was gone because uh, it was in the printer margins. So make sure that uh, you are taking a printout in such a way that there's no clipping that, uh, that occurs here. You can also measure this uh, to make sure that there's no scaling but I'll be doing that in the actual printout since I've already measured it. And also make sure uh, this spiral uh, also has no kind of a clipping or anything. And the next two sheets you can just, uh, just keep it in the PDF itself. Now this is the reference to uh, mark onto the cardboard. Uh, where uh, it has to be cut or uh, and uh, the next uh, two drawings are the references uh, to measure uh, uh, the printouts that you have taken uh, once you take it uh, once you take the final printout uh, but uh, you can uh, probably just keep it as a pdf or you can take the actual printout like i have done uh, so it will be much easier uh, now the other thing is that uh, you can probably use a normal sheet like this uh, and take a printout and just stick it there uh, just for the better effect i'm using a photo sheet and I feel that is going to do a better job um, as uh, uh, that will uh, be a better clock dial than a normal sheet. So uh, once you are uh, uh, done with the, uh, the trial prints, we can go for the actual print and I'll be taking an actual print on my desktop computer and after that uh, we'll discuss about this. I have the printouts ready here on a photo sheet. Um, now you can just use a, a normal scale to take all the measurements that you need but uh, I'm just going to go the, uh, the difficult way and use a vernier caliper and what I'm going to do is uh, according to the drawings that I've provided uh, I should take the reading from here to here and that should be 128.5 and uh, yeah if I keep it here yeah it's 129 
I'll keep it at 128.5 and then refer it. Yeah. So this is uh, approximately 128.5 from here to here. Of course, it's very difficult to get an um, exact reading. So it's nearly 128.5. So that uh, just uh, helps me to, uh, uh, to assure myself that the print has come out properly and there's no scaling. The other measurement that we have to take uh, is of the clock dial itself and it's supposed to be 270 millimeters uh, by uh, 100 millimeters. Now the width is perfect and when it comes to the length there seems to be a millimeter or two difference but I think that will be fine. So uh, it's nearly 270 by 100 so I'm happy with that. So once this is done uh, we can go ahead and make the clock body. We have to make the mark uh, markings to cut the clock body on the cardboard. And once we are done with that, we can cut it, we can build the clock body, we can paint it. And after that, attach the clock dial and prepare the hands. I'd like to briefly go over the markings that I have done. I've used uh, this drawing as a reference, of course. And uh, uh, what I found out was that, uh, I mean, pretty early on in the drawing itself, I have mentioned that it is uh, not possible to fit this on the type of cardboard that I wanted to buy. So if you have a very large piece of cardboard, you can probably sketch the same thing. Just add the tapers for the flaps and cut it as one single thing bend it and then assemble it that's a, that'll be the easier thing but since i'm not able to do that since the width is quite less here uh, what i have done is i have actually uh, just sketched these two parts on one side of the file uh, right here and this part i've sketched it separately and i've added a flap on this end and uh, that can be seen on the other side of the file here and the uh, the square at the bottom uh, this i've uh, done it separately on a different piece of file and uh, that is on a different file and I'll be needing two files because anyway I'll need a support for the R hand as well so for that I have bought two files so this I'll be cutting it from the other file so this is straightforward now uh, this is just a, a 10 cross 10 uh, square what I've sketched here so this is 10 cross 10 and uh, on the other side I can use this uh, face of the cardboard as a support for the R's hand uh, but here I'll just uh, briefly explain how I've done the markings. So I've drawn a straight line taking one of the crease as a reference I've drawn a straight line here and from here this is 100 mm I've drawn another parallel line and from here to here another 100 mm I've kept 1 mm extra uh, just uh, because we'll be bending it right here and uh, from the top I've reduced 15 millimeters and that is for the uh, again taking 15 mm from either end here uh, we need to take the fillet at the ends so i'm not cutting the fillet uh, once i go to cutting i won't be cutting the fillet i'll be keeping it till i cut the dial and i'll be matching the fillet of the dial in this and then i'll cut it more precisely now after that i'll be taking 20 millimeters here and i'll be taking uh, 150 millimeters uh, from the top here so 20 here and then 150 here i'll uh, make two marks and i'll join it so that will be my this side and I'm taking 15 more millimeters here just as uh, I've shown in the sketch and I'll be drawing a flap here for 15 mm but I'm extending another flap uh, to the, uh, the to the main dial side of the clock body as well so that uh, we can attach it to that uh, t t like 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter square, uh, square piece uh, and I'll be putting these tapers so that uh, we can use them as individual flaps so the bend will be along this line and then I've done a very similar thing on this side uh, so uh, for this end and uh, I've taken one straight line I've kept 15 mm for the flaps and after that another uh, 100 mm and 20 here and 150 here I've drawn a line uh, I've added uh, one flap here and this is the only extra thing there will be one more flap here so that it attaches uh, to the main clock body and as I said uh, there is another uh, 100 cross 100 or 10 centimeter cross 10 centimeter square on the other piece and I'll also be using uh, the other phase uh, or the other uh, flap of the uh, the file uh, to use as a support for the R hand uh, so we'll uh, discuss this later so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut everything I'm just going to put some newspaper on my table so that I won't be leaving any marks on the table itself I'll be using the blades and scissors to cut it according to the markings that I've done 
and once it's cut we can uh, start assembling it now before we cut anything from one of the failed test prints of the dial face i have uh, i have cut out the outline of the dial this is one of the failed prints uh, since the text didn't come out properly so i just cut it out uh, the outline of uh, the dial uh, and i'll be keeping it on the markings that i've done as a reference so if i align it properly uh, i should be able to see that uh, it's almost uh, uh, like it's the sketches are almost proper what i've done here but you'll be seeing some gap on either end that is because as i said i've kept about one mm uh, uh, extra here uh, while measuring the width so, uh, just to accommodate the bend what i need uh, at this particular line uh, so even if uh, that uh, that width what i have it uh, uh, shows up then since i'm uh, planning to paint the whole clock body black uh, that will just appear as a black border if you align everything correctly uh, so this is probably a better idea to check uh, if uh, if everything is coming out properly uh, just to uh, keep this and check it and uh, now uh, now that this is done uh, i'll be cutting everything i'll put some newspaper on the table and i'll cut all the markings that i've done um, and uh, after that we can start gluing everything together all the pieces all the cardboard pieces that i need cut and ready now we have the first piece uh, and uh, we have the second piece which will attach to the first piece with this flap right here so it will overlap somewhat like uh, this and on the bottom we'll be putting this square piece and that will assemble to form uh, the structure that we have designed so you can see that uh, this is in agreement with uh, the design what we have done and also the other thing that i've done is to uh, mark the center of this rectangle and i've drawn a very simple circle using a, a stencil kind of a stencil that i made by punching a hole through a cardboard and this uh, hole will be cut out so that the moment will be fit inside it so i'll be cutting that hole a little bit small and once we fit the moment inside it uh, i think that will uh, just enlarge the hole and other than that uh, i'll also be now cutting all the uh, printouts that i've taken on the photo sheet uh, uh, mainly the dial uh, the R hand itself, uh, I won't be cutting it, I'll just cut roughly around it and I'll be sticking it onto uh, the other piece of cardboard that I have uh, on the file and uh, I'll be uh, cutting once uh, it's adhered to that cardboard. completed cutting uh, the photo sheet uh, what I had the dial face and uh, I've aligned it onto the uh, the body that I had cut in chili and then I've marked where the hole is exactly supposed to be and based on that I've also marked the, uh, the fillets on the top and I've marked the excess what I had on this side as well as this side so this side uh, that is going to help me where I can bend uh, the cardboard and this side whatever I had as excess I've just trimmed it with uh, some scissors and the hole itself I've cut it with the knife and then I've uh, used a pair of uh, tweezers and the knife itself uh, to uh, make it a bit round and also I've just made the uh, edges of the cutout smoother with a rolled piece of uh, uh, sandpaper and with that done uh, the next step is what we have to do is uh, since we have the, uh, the spread uh, the flattened uh, piece of drawing here we have to uh, make all the creases so wherever I have the lines that is uh, this particular line here and the bottom edge here and uh, this line here as well as the two bottom edges this will have to be creased so i'm going to use the knife itself uh, just like how i was cutting it i'm going to create creases but i won't be running the knife all the way through the cardboard instead i'll just make a couple of runs and once i have the crease uh, i should be able to easily bend it now all the creases are ready 
and I had to increase the amount of taper I had here because uh, they were op overlapping once I uh, uh, did the fold. Uh, so with that ready, the next step is to apply some fevicol. Uh, I do, you can use the art glue fevicol that's available in uh, uh, the tubes, but I just have a bottle of fevicol, so I'll be using some fevicol from that. So I'll be applying it uh, first onto this flap and sticking it onto the uh, the main face. And after that, I'll be applying it to these three flaps and I'll be sticking it onto this uh, rectangle, uh, the square base. So once that's done, uh, we can let it dry and then we can paint it. Now I've uh, rather sharply added some tape inside so that uh, these flaps don't open up by themselves. I mean, uh, the fevicol should be good enough. I'll be adding one more tape here too, but the fevicol should be good enough. Uh, but in any case, just to be on the safer side, I've added some uh, uh, masking tape here and that uh, should make sure that uh, it uh, doesn't come off by itself. Now with the clock body almost completely ready, uh, the next step what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some acrylic colors. I'm just going to thin it a little. Uh, and then I'm going to paint all the faces of this body uh, in black uh, so that it will also act as a border if uh, the tire, there's a mismatch in the dial size. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to paint the first face first and after that I'm going to paint uh, each of the faces and I'll leave that to dry. Now it took me quite some time but I was able to paint each and every face of this clock body uh, with the black color uh, with acrylic paint and uh, since that is ready now uh, the next step would be to stick the dial onto the uh, the clock body and uh, the alignment here is of paramount importance the first thing is to make sure that the hole aligns properly here and then all the edges are uh, uh, of the dial are parallel to the edges of the clock body and with that we can stick it uh, with some fevicol uh, onto the clock body and uh, once that's done we can leave it to dry and we can concentrate our uh, uh, next efforts onto the uh, the clock hand The dial is properly adhered onto the clock body. Uh, actually, uh, the dial that I've showed uh, attaching that had an issue. Uh, one of the things that I learned the hard way is that uh, we should uh, just probably clean our hands uh, after applying the fevicol before touching the dial because that fevicol, uh, uh, like, adhered to the dial on the face in a lot of spaces and that just peeled the paint off in many uh, places so i had to print another piece and uh, stick it on here so here while cutting it again the border is not perfect but uh, the black shows up and i think that's uh, good enough and uh, this is dry now uh, what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to apply a very small bead of uh, fevicol in here uh, so that uh, it doesn't peel off from here uh, it just anyway have uh, excess amount of fevicol already and the r hand uh, which i just cut now uh, I had a lot of difficulty cutting the curve. Uh, I had to use a combination of scissors and the knife and that uh, created a lot of uh, jaggy edges. So what I'll be doing about it is I'll be sanding the edges clean. Now I have uh, put it uh, in a, uh, under some heavy books so that it flattens up because uh, it is kind of curving upwards. So once it's flat, I'll be uh, like, uh, I'll be uh, putting a bead of fevicol around the edge of the, uh, the hand. And after that, I'm just planning to cover, uh, color the whole thing black because while cutting the paint peeled off uh, or the print peeled off at uh, some places. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this marker and uh, paint the whole uh, whole hand black. Uh, and after that, uh, we can attach the R hand to it. Now I had already made a spiral and had also assembled it onto the clock, but I was not entirely satisfied with the result. So I've taken a printout of the spiral again. This time I've made sure that it is black and not the odd color that came out last time. And uh, I'm going to cut the spiral and uh, uh, again, uh, stick it onto a cardboard. In the first attempt, what I did is I just uh, roughly cut around it. I stuck it onto a cardboard and then I uh, went over the finer details. But uh, my plan now is to cut it properly uh, in the first coup itself from the photo sheet itself, stick it onto the cardboard and then uh, uh, cut it again uh, to the proper shape. Uh, so uh, that is what I'm going to do right now.
now I have cut the more intricate parts or the more interior parts of the spiral and uh, the rest I've uh, kept it as it is so that uh, it doesn't uh, flex while sticking and uh, uh, after that uh, now it is stuck to the cardboard now I'll let it dry uh, one of the problem that I'm constantly facing is that some of the fevicol seeps onto the uh, like the front of the uh, print and it causes some kind of uh, uh, a damage to the front of the print and for that reason uh, what I'm going to do is like I uh, did with my first spiral I'm just going to use a CD marker pen and color the whole spiral black and uh, that will hide most of the mistakes or any uh, cutting errors I'll also be uh, like coloring the cardboard black once I cut it but as of now I'm just going to color the front of it black now while the hand uh, uh, is between those heavy books uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, prepare this R hand, the original R hand what I have and also the minutes and seconds hand uh, to use it on the clock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this uh, printout that I've taken which is again uh, properly to scale and uh, I'm going to cut the R hand to the length I need. So here uh, one of the things that we can observe is that this particular R hand has a taper on top, uh, a kind of a, a taper from both ends and uh, I'm going to first cut this uh, to the length I need uh, inside the circle and I'm going to flatten this top end so that I can easily adhere it uh, to the uh, to my spiral. So uh, for that what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it upside down here and I'm just going to make a very small mark as to where I should make the cut. So make sure that the hole is aligned properly and here I need to cut it. So uh, just a bit below this point, I need to cut the R hand. For that, I'm going to use one of this. This is a nail puller. I usually use an end cutter, but I don't have access to it. It's uh, not with me right now. So for that reason, I'm going to use this and I'm just going to cut the hand to the length. First, I'm going to make one cut here so that I can easily uh, put the end cutter inside. And another snap. Now, finally, I can place it at the length I need and once it's aligned properly you can just snap it off so that is how we can cut the hand and once it's cut we can uh, use a piece of sandpaper and uh, just shape it into the shape we need so I have a sandpaper here I'm just going to uh, make the edges smooth so once that is done uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, keep it on a block of wood and I'm going to flatten the top so that uh, we can easily add, uh, we can easily put some fevicol and uh, fix it onto the uh, onto the spiral what we have, the spiral hand what we have. So we can see that as we sand uh, the face uh, becomes flat here. One of the other reasons why I'm uh, going to sand it is because again we'll add some thickness in the form of the cardboard uh, backing what we have uh, for the spiral. So uh, for that reason I just want this uh, thickness to reduce, I'm going to sand this end as well. And the third reason uh, for sanding is because uh, the fevicol will adhere properly, that is if it's a very smooth surface uh, it may not adhere that properly. So for that uh, that is one of the other reasons why uh, we'll have to end up sanding it. Once that is done uh, we can attach it to our spiral. Now once I'm happy with the amount of uh, flat surface that I need here, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, I'm going to now uh, work on the minutes and the seconds hand. So the minutes and the second hand you can probably leave it as it is but I feel it's too long. So I'm going to use this printout of the dial as my reference and I'm going to cut it uh, to the same length as the indices are. So that is approximately here, just a bit shorter than that probably and you can just shape the edges and in the same way. Uh, when it comes to the second hand, uh, I'm going to just place it over there and I'll, I'll leave this a bit longer than the minutes hand and snap around there. And I'll use the same cutter and the same method that I used before. So I'll snap it somewhere around here. After that, we can make a clean cut here. And once that is done, uh, we can shape the end. Uh, to our paper which is a sandpaper or rather I think I'll give it a curve
yeah and once you're happy with the shape uh, we can move on to the second sand and i'll snap it in around there yeah. and after that uh, i can just uh, sand it clean If you can, you can probably buy hand switcher of the proper length uh, for your uh, for this style. But uh, I don't have any which uh, actually match this length. So for that reason, I'm going to just uh, cut this to the length I need. some amount of black with this permanent marker here if you need and I think that should be sufficient so we now have the R minute and the seconds hand ready so the R hand uh, we have to attach it to our spiral once that is ready uh, but uh, the hands itself uh, we can uh, just keep them and see what lengths we have cut them to and I think I'm happy with that so once that is done uh, we can move on to the spiral now that the photo sheet is well adhered to the cardboard uh, i will cut the spiral i will first cut the hole in the middle and then i'll cut the spiral and after that uh, i have a piece of copper wire which i'll be using it as support uh, from the rear uh, i'll be sticking that is fully cut and I have uh, painted both sides of it black with the CD marker but uh, it's still not stiff so I'll be uh, putting a copper wire uh, behind it so to shape the copper wire uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the printout that I have uh, the full scale printout um, on a normal sheet uh, as a reference and I'll be bending the copper wire to the shape uh, to this shape and after that uh, I'll be sticking it to this so in the meantime I'll just keep it under some heavy books so that it will uh, somewhat flatten up I have the full scale reference drawing here on normal sheet and I also have this uh, very thick uh, copper wire and uh, I don't know what gauge it is but when I measured it it's 0.8 millimeters and what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, like shape the wire uh, for the safe spiral and uh, I will flatten it with a, a pair of pliers very small pliers and I'll shape it and after that we can stick it onto our actual spiral. the spiral is ready uh, I've also tried to make it uh, flat as much as possible uh, and uh, the wire is also ready which will act as a support on it uh, the next step is to glue it into place I think I have probably cut it a little bit too short so I'll probably add one more piece at the end if I feel the, that is required uh, so what I'm going to do is I'll use this masking tape and I'll just uh, attach the wire first onto the spiral. I'll have to uh, like properly shape it as I attach. I now have the rough shape, but I'll just have to probably shape it a little bit more as I attach it. Uh, I'll start from in around here, leaving some place for the R hand to fit. Um, and then I'll attach it completely. After that, I'll just apply glue over the wire so that uh, once it dries, we'll have a much uh, a better bond. The reason why I'm using masking tape is that I can just uh, color it black once I attach uh, the wire onto this. Now the spiral is cut and I've just uh, sanded the edges uh, very slightly uh, and I've also punched the hole. Uh, so this is the spiral with the cardboard backing and uh, I've also painted it black completely with uh, the CD marker pen uh, that is to hide any kind of uh, defects. 
uh, and with that uh, the main thing that is now remaining is now uh, this is somewhat uh, good somewhat stiff but still uh, it's not good enough so I've already learned the hard way at least two times now and uh, for that I'll be putting this uh, uh, this copper wire as a backing now I've already twisted it uh, to this particular shape using the printed uh, draw the printed one as a reference uh, the same spiral printed on normal paper as a reference and I didn't cut the wire to the proper length so I have uh, another uh, small piece here so what I'll be doing is I'll be using some uh, masking tape and I'll be sticking it onto the spiral at uh, some of the points and after that I'll be applying some fevicol and I'll just uh, let it dry and with that uh, the our hand should be uh, I mean our spiral which will be our, our hand will be quite stiff so we can attach the uh, the normal our hand what we have cut to the proper length and uh, we can uh, assemble the clock The, uh, the wire is stuck securely here with the masking tape and I've colored it black as well. Now while sticking it make sure that uh, uh, the printed side is facing towards you and uh, you're sticking the wire on the back side because again I've learned it the hard way. And uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply some fevicol around the wire as well as underneath the wire and uh, I'll just let it dry. Now the spiral is ready and it's quite stiff as it's uh, quite visible uh, and the glue is dry uh, on the wire. Uh, the next step what I have to do is I have to uh, stick the R hand which I had cut uh, here. Now this is from my previous attempt. I had initially made this and I had assembled the clock as well. I have stuck the R hand here. So I'll have to take it from here, uh, just uh, remove it from here and then stick it here. So uh, here uh, I had used some toothpicks to give some stiffness to this and uh, after that I used a piece of OFC cable uh, to give some stiffness to it. Even then uh, it was uh, far from perfect. That's one of the reasons why I use this wire. So now uh, uh, I also had one more failed attempt in between where I ended up gluing the wire on the, uh, on the wrong side. So here I'll now have to remove the R hand from this and I'll be sticking it here. And after that uh, we can assemble the clock. Once the glue dries uh, we can assemble the clock. But uh, one more thing is uh, I have uh, now uh, let it dry under some heavy books. And I've also kept it on a flat floor and made sure that this is uh, quite flat. If it's not, you can just use some pliers or just uh, uh, some pressure from your hand to just flatten this thing. It has to be absolutely flashed for the best results. Now we have all the essential components of a clock ready. We have the clock body along with the dial attached to it. We have the clock movement. We have uh, the hour hand, the minute hand, the seconds hand, as well as the net that is used to secure the moment. And uh, we have the the most important thing, the, uh, the battery, which is used to run the clock. And uh, as you can see, I've removed the nut from the clock moment. There was also one more rubber ring. Uh, I did actually assemble the clock already once with uh, the old R hand, which uh, didn't work out perfectly, as I uh, mentioned. Uh, so I have enlarged this hole using uh, first using a knife and then uh, using the tweezers. I've just uh, inserted it inside there and I've just twisted it. And other than that, uh, the thing is, uh, the rubber ring uh, what was here uh, when I assembled that uh, into the clock uh, I ran into a problem that is uh, the moment was not secure it was just twisting around so I removed the rubber ring and assembled it uh, with just the nut and it came out well so now I'm going to assemble it uh, without the rubber ring and just with this nut so uh, I'll walk you through the process of assembly and uh, we'll see how the clock uh, goes back together uh, how the clock is assembled completely uh, so make sure that you have everything ready all the hands uh, should be of the right length uh, by the time you assemble it also make sure that uh, the R hand is completely flat as I mentioned just keep it on a flat surface like this and then make sure that uh, there is uh, it's not uh, lifting up from the surface or uh, something like that so just make sure it's uh, perfect before you start the assembly now once you're sure that you have all the components ready the first step to do is to assemble the clock moment so you have the clock moment and you have the clock body and you have the hole 
uh, through which uh, the moment has to uh, fit. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the moment in here and just uh, rotate it a couple of times so that it comes out perfectly uh, from the other end. And I'm going to put the net from the other end and I'm going to just uh, thread it uh, with my hand until I can uh, feel that it has threaded by at least a few rounds. Uh, you may find it uh, difficult initially uh, to thread it because of all the uh, like uneven cardboard there but since I've already done it once uh, that uh, will be much easier. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these tweezers. Now you can do it with uh, other tools or just your hands or any normal tweezers anything but uh, I found these uh, tweezers to be very good. So I'm holding the moment uh, from the other end and uh, make sure that the, the battery compartment of the moment is down like this and holding it in this position just uh, tighten the clock from uh, tighten the nut from the other end yeah so when that is tight enough uh, let it not be way too tight because it may punch it through the cardboard uh, so when it is uh, perfect when uh, usually i just prefer to have uh, the movement aligned like this with the uh, the battery compartment facing downwards but it doesn't matter because uh, it doesn't uh, it is not an absolute device where uh, the position is very important but i uh, find it uh, better this way so the next thing i'm going to do is to assemble the r hand so all the hands are just uh, push fit into their uh, place in a clock uh, much like in a watch so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to uh, place the r hand here and just push it uh, inside and it will take some support from the moment just push it into its position make sure it's secure yeah so after that uh, i can see that uh, the hand just touches the dial slightly so i'll bend the copper wire slightly upwards and i think that should be uh, good enough and i'm going to just check if uh, the hand rotates and it does so i'm going to set it to the uh, 12 o'clock position which is right here make sure that the hand uh, the spiral uh, completely touches the line on the twelve o'clock position once that is done uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the minutes hand and i'm going to press it into the uh, twelve o'clock position on the mini dial that i've created here again i'm going to hold the moment from the rear and i'm going to push it in Once I'm uh, sure about that, I'll just have to check if everything functions as intended. So if I give it uh, one complete revolution, I should be seeing the spiral touch one o'clock and it does. Now off camera, I've kept the clock vertically uh, and I've checked uh, and made sure that uh, the R hand functions properly at all its uh, intended positions that is uh, i have to set uh, the spiral to different uh, positions uh, to different numbers and then um, i should just uh, uh, make sure that the uh, whenever it uh, is on any particular hour the minute hand should be on the 12 o'clock position or uh, if i uh, take this minute hand as a reference when i uh, move it one complete revolution the spiral should be pointing to one of these hours and uh, that i've checked for the complete range uh, of the time we have here that is from one o'clock to the 12 o'clock position and it works perfectly also the other thing we need to make sure is that there is no interference between the spiral and the and the dial and since we have added a copper wire here i can just slightly bend it uh, very slightly bend it if there is any such interference and also there should be no interference between the spiral and the minute hand so once we're sure of that uh, we can um, assemble the second hand so uh, assembling the second hand is uh, very straightforward i had to tighten it slightly so i've just pinched it here with a very small uh, uh, nose plier and i'm just going to push it into its place and make sure it rotates freely without any interference once that is done the only thing that is left now is to put the battery in and i'm going to do just that make sure to, uh, uh, so you are putting it in the right way okay. and with that our clock should start to run now i'll be setting time and i'll be checking it uh, for a, a good duration of time also uh, one thing about the fibonacci clock is that it should be kept vertical at all times whenever it's uh, working so that there's no interference 
Keeping it vertically, uh, we can easily check the time without any parallax error as well as uh, make sure that there is no interference between uh, to any two parts, the minute hand, seconds hand, the R hand as well as the dial. Uh, there should be no interference between them. So once that is done, our Fibonacci clock is complete. Now I can uh, let it uh, run for uh, at least 12 hours. Uh, so that the spiral takes one complete revolution all the uh, like the spiral will take one complete revolution and if there is any interference we'll uh, know by then and uh, we can uh, do the necessary corrections in the meantime and with that uh, the fibonacci clock is complete <music>